Welcome to Devlog Zero for a project I'm calling Diamonds. It's my attempt to create a digital version of a card game that I created. Um, the game design for the card game is still a bit in flux, so I'll be doing a video later showing off the game in its card form um, as I get those game design pieces nailed down. But I'm at the point where I know that I definitely want to turn it into a digital version as well that can be played over the internet. And so I think I'm going to record myself as I go about developing this and sharing any kind of interesting technical things I learn. So the first thing I wanted to go over was my search for a JavaScript library which would allow me to um, represent cards. I ended up finding this really cool library called deckofcards.js. Um, this is their demo site, so it's not something I made, but um, it, it's quite nice looking. You can um, drag these cards around. You can click on them to flip them, and they have this pretty cool animation library here where you can, like for instance, shuffle the cards, you can fan them out uh, by suit, uh, let's see, flip those, you can have it where it deals like a poker hand, all kinds of stuff like that. So I found this library and it looked quite promising, however, I think as I started going about thinking about the actual architecture for this, I want the game to be multiplayer, and I want there to actually be a game server which handles most of the logic. And I started realizing that a lot of the benefit that this game gives, or that this library gives, is more kind of the animation and the ability to kind of drag these cards around, stuff like that. In the end, I actually don't think that I even want um, these cards to be draggable, and I'm, I don't need to do any of this fancy animations. So I probably won't actually end up using this, but the reason I wanted to show it off was just first because it's very cool and very well done, and also there was a few development techniques that I thought were quite interesting once I started digging into the code. So um, I found the example JavaScript file which controls this um, screen here, and I wanted to see how they did something like, for instance, the poker or the fan um, buttons. And so let's just look up like the fan, for instance, right? So it's saying, okay, we'll create a button, um, we will, let's see, they're going to attach a event listener, so when you click it, it does deck.fan. So immediately I was like, okay, well, I wonder what deck.fan does. So if we go into the deck JavaScript file, which is right here, this um, defines this class uh, called deck, and if we look for fan, um, we see there's an import of module fan, and then it's listed in the deck.modules, but that's it. And so this is the pattern that I thought was quite interesting, was this kind of pluggable module architecture. And so the way this works, basically, is we, um, let's, let's look at like where these modules are used. And so here we see that the modules are listed as deck.modules, which was low, low, put it below. And then there's this thing which basically loads each of the modules. It calls the add module function, which um, is, let's see, add module here. And this is very simply just says, if module.deck exists, then call module.deck passing in the deck. So this is the pattern that I'm talking about. And basically the idea here is that here are a list of modules, which are all can, can all be loaded. And so let's look at the fan module and see how this would work. So if you remember, it was calling the module.deck and it was passing in the deck object. And so here you can see that this module exports two function, or an object with two functions. One is deck, the other one is card. And the idea here is that this deck is a function so that actually takes the real deck object. And what it does is it kind of builds it up with functionality. It adds functionality to it. And so you can see here, basically, it's defining the fan method on deck here and as this function here. The queued is something that it does later where you can basically queue up a bunch of actions. Don't worry about that too much. But the, the, the cool crux of the issue here is basically that the uh, module defines extra functionality on the deck by having the deck kind of pass itself in and say, okay, change me however you want. Um, and this module system actually works for cards as well. So it's kind of a cool way to do code organization where you can say, 
I want to define some characteristic on different parts of my system. So I want to be able to add behavior to the deck object as well as the card object. And instead of always having that functionality in those objects proper, you can define this module, which defines how functions which allow you to add on behavior. Um, at a high level, I don't know if I'm super convinced that I love this pattern um, in the sense that it fully relies on this kind of blind um, mutation of state. And I've really been enjoying the kind of reasoning that you can do about programs when they're, they're much more functional and you don't really do this kind of thing where you're kind of just passing in an object, having this module do whatever it might do to it and pass it back. Um, it makes it a bit harder to reason about the base logic um, and kind of gives a lot of control to these modules that it's debatable whether that's uh, great or not. The thing I do like a lot about it though is the ability to kind of do this code splitting where you define functionality for a concept but on multiple objects for the system as opposed to having to put those in the original object or as opposed to having like a deck module which then is decoupled from the card module um, for the fan behavior. And so I actually think this is a pretty cool pattern. So I wanted to share that. Um, uh, another design decision I made, so because I'm going to be doing the web server um, and we're going to be doing multiplayer, I'm just basically going to be using Express. Um, I've had good experience with Express just being like very quick and easy to get up and extensible enough that you can get quite reasonable functionality running without having your code become a mess. Um, and the, the game server won't be too complicated. Um, the game itself is actually not too complicated. So basically the game server will be in charge of um, being able to create new games, have players join these games and kind of all matchmake. And then once the game has started, obviously every player will basically submit their move to the server, the server will update state, update all the clients that are listening, and uh, facilitate the game flow like that. So that's it for this dev vlog. I just wanted to go over that really cool pattern in the deck of cards library and go over some of my initial decisions about game server and such. Join me back for the next one.